today we are discussing an energy many of us are both familiar with and want, the energy of happiness. It's a huge topic. It's a subjective topic. Let's see if we can tackle it in 30 minutes here on the Infinite Energy Podcast with Kay and Chai. Hi, we're sisters Kay and Chai, and we're the hosts of the Infinite Energy Podcast. We believe that everyone has the power to live a more energized, optimistic, and fulfilling life. In every episode, we share tips and techniques for harnessing your own power and creating the life you deserve. Get ready to ignite and discover the limitless power of Infinite Infinite Energy. Energy. Now, we brought this episode to you today because we're happy if you feel like Like a room without a roof. We've been clapping and happying and singing all afternoon. (laughs) It feels like that's the theme song of today's episode as we talk about this energy, which is a huge topic. Sometimes people like to condemn happiness. Sometimes it's celebrated. It's often quoted and and brought forward as a concept to follow. And it's what we want to unpack today because it's definitely something you think we're all seeking whether we call it happiness or not. Well, when most of us ask what we want for our lives, I think it's pretty safe to say, and I'll say most just in case you're in the 1% that doesn't, but I think it's pretty safe to say that most of us would say, what do we want for our lives? Well, we want to be happy. Right. You think about if you hear parents talk about what they want for their kids, most of them will say something along the lines of, I just want my kids to be happy, right? That's what we hear most often. And so we're, we are seeking this level of happiness, but it is subjective, right? Because what you think will make you happy, others have and aren't happy, which means that there's this level of experience inside that is allowing you to be happy or that is controlling this energy flow. And it's one we've often been uh, told, oh, you two are so happy all of the time. <laughs> and, and we do appreciate that. And Thank it's you. true. We're not happy all of the time, but we are pretty happy individuals and pretty happy sisters. And so it's an energy that we're familiar with and we want to share a little bit on today's episode about how we try to find find ways to cultivate that even more in our lives. Well, happiness is something that many of us seek and and oftentimes we hear stories of, you know, the lottery winner who ends up spending all of their earnings or the billionaire who is absolutely miserable, right? And, and there's this idea that the things that we want, many things like money or travel or or uh, a new partner or whatever that is, these things aren't going to make you happy if you don't crack the code of internal happiness first. And now this is such a big topic. This is so huge for so many of us that the studies on happiness and its antithesis, depression and anxiety, have have come out in spades. Now, there are some statistics around happiness we want to share with you. In the United States, the percentage of adults who reported being very happy has decreased Decreased from the past decade from 35% in 2007 to 31% in 2018. So we see that this level of people on a mass scale are feeling less and less happy. 30%, that's a shame that only one out of every three people is feeling that level of consistent happiness. Now, if you know anything about this podcast, you know that we've always got to have a definition of the day. So let's talk about what happiness is for us. It is that positive energy we feel when we experience joy, contentment, and fulfillment. And when I was talking about this subject earlier with my husband and his thoughts on, of happiness, contentment was the word that Chad used. It's that feeling of contentment. So if you're hearing those words and going, yes, I do want more fulfillment, contentment, and joy, that's that same energetic signature that we're talking about when we say happiness. You know, what's interesting about this is totally off script, everybody. So just get ready because this is a personal, we are all rogue. What's interesting about Chad bringing that forward is that you and I also went on a quest inside the definition of happiness Mm -hmm. because we kept saying, well, what we want is to be happy. What we want is to be happy. And you, many of you know, if you've been listening to the Infinite Energy podcast that Shyla and I teach at university, Shyla is a scholar with her master's degree in sociology. And so we, we have an understanding and an appreciation for definitions. And so back in like 2018, we're like, well, we just want to be happy. We just want to be happy. And so we're like, well, what does happiness mean? And so we look up this 
definition and it's got these three things in it, contentment, joy, and fulfillment. And for us, we went, wait, what's fulfillment? And so we look up the definition of fulfillment. It's satisfaction or happiness as a result of fully developing one's character. And that was for us, the happiness that felt most, uh, most fulfilling and most exciting, most energizing. But what's interesting to hear Chad say, you know, contentment, because contentment and fulfillment are two different definitions. And so Mm -hmm. everyone is approaching the elephant of happiness as the blind man, right? Your definition of happiness is different from my definition of happiness, just like our definition of happiness or even the word within the definition that you and I glommed onto was totally different from that of Chad's energy, right? The expression of happiness that we're seeking is more on the fulfillment side versus the contentment side versus the joy side. And there are other expressions as well, but whatever, whatever yours is, I hope that you picked up on what Kay just shared there because you got our download of seven years of personal growth quest in like a 30 second clip. And that was us really exploring on our way to find that what is happiness for us. Well, first we chased passion, but that's barely controllable emotion. And that's that's a piece of the pie, but it's not the whole pie. And then we tried to plant in purpose, but that feels too much like planted because you can't move. It's too rigid. The sole reason for which something exists, that's a lot. But we it took us a long time to get through both of those phases before we found that fulfillment piece where we're like, well, what is it that we're really looking for, right? That happiness, it's fulfillment. Well, what is fulfillment? Oh, MG, it comes with a formula, right? It's developing character. And so then we started looking at how do we craft the character of who we want to be, who's going to achieve all the things that we think are going to make us happy. And that was like, ding, 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 ding. That's where the big juice and sauce comes from for us. So I just love that we're able to talk about on the podcast with all of you, that growth journey that took so long and so sloppy and so many mistakes and so, so much pain uh, and share it with you and hopefully give you a few insights that help you get along the journey a little bit faster. Well, I think what's so special about this is that it, knowing that the journey to happiness is going to bring different flavors of it until you find the thing that is just right for you. And, and we found something that's just right for us. And it turns out that it's just right for a lot of people when it comes to creating or engaging uh, in things like creating more happiness in your life. So let's get into it. Let's Let's talk a little bit about what you can do to stoke and create happiness in your life. Now, we hear some pretty interesting statistics, right? Two thirds of people are saying, I'm not very happy. I I would imagine that a good portion of those people say I'm moderately happy, right? We probably have a decent bell curve here. But what what is life if not an opportunity to be very happy instead of moderately happy? And so can we find ways? What are the ways and the actions that we take in order to cultivate more happiness in our life? Now, I want to talk about, we're going to talk about many of them throughout this podcast, but want to bring one forward first that Shyla and I love that is so easy. And in fact, we engaged in it right before we came here. This is stoking happiness from a physical perspective by moving your body in order to create happy chemicals inside your brain. Energy can't be created, it can't be stopped, and it can't be destroyed, but it can be flowed in greater and greater capacity. And if you physically flow energy through your body by moving it, you are able to feel, feel and fill more inside of happiness, of emotion, of joy, of contentment, of fulfillment, of all of those things that we're looking for. And so that's something that we had a little dance party. We did. Both in the living room and in the car on the way over. And that helps just stoke that feeling. And it's such a fun. Uh, way to to get that right that that crafting of a character of somebody who behaves in the way that is who you want to be and who you want to become. Now, most of us hear happiness and we think, I know the number one ingredient to make me happy. It's money. money. That dollar dollar bills, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> right, and and money is great. And it, it is great. Yeah, it does. It gives you options, which helps you in your happiness level. So, like, absolutely, we endorse money as a happiness <laughs> helper. Fans. Big fans. And happiness tool. And so may many abundance and prosperities be blessed on to you. <laughs> and understand that the research shows that after you make about $75,000 a year, the rest of the happiness game is on you. Yes, you'll get more options. Yes, things that you will you will love and you will prefer more and more and more opulence can come to you. But the happiness level, statistically speaking, is up to you after that $75,000 level, which means yes, and you have a 
lot of room that you can do without money that can make you way happier than you think. So do your best to maybe find little dials in your life right now that you can turn to up the happiness. One of those dials is these little small physical activity dance breaks, but also just going to go off and, and, and promote an active physical lifestyle like would recommend <laughs> moving your body every single day. And I feel like this sounds silly or like maybe can't be or like, yeah, 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 I get it. But as someone who used to not move their body every single day and is now someone who does move their body every single day, I can tell you that it's easier to stay happy. I, it, I'm more emotionally and physically resilient and it can be really um, fulfilling and a, a great driver for creating long-term happiness in your life. If you're wondering what more tips are for how to be and cultivate happiness energy, you're in for a treat because that's what we're addressing in the next part. So stay tuned for part two of the energy of happiness. Do you find yourself losing control of your scroll on social media? If you do, then you want to stay tuned to join the Simply Social Club with Kay and I. We've got an awesome challenge for you where you have the opportunity to detox from social media for 48 hours, seven days, 14, or even 31 days right along Shyla and I. So go to kandshy.com slash simply social and find out a little bit more. And hopefully you'll take a pledge alongside us. We'll see you in 2023. See you in the club. We're talking leadership this week, and one of the organizations we are so proud to be at the helm of is the Neuroencoding Institute. We got to co-found the Neuroencoding Institute alongside Dr. Joseph McClendon III, amazing, world-renowned neuropsychologist and incredible mentor and teacher. If you're at all interested in learning more about what the Neuroencoding Institute does and what it can do for you, please visit neuroencoding.com. You're enjoying this episode on Angel Phoenix Productions Podcast Network. To explore a complete lineup of quality programs and media production services, head on over to angelphoenix.com or like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Angel Phoenix Productions. Next up, we are going to talk about one of the biggest drivers to influencing your happiness. Shy, should we spill the tea? Yeah, but this time we got to spell it T-E-E. -E. T -E -E. <laughs> <laughs> That's because we're talking our thoughts, our emotions, and our energy. Three things that contribute a humongous amount to the level of happiness we feel. In fact, those thought, this thoughts piece alone is worth an entire, its own energy, right? But oh, yeah, yeah. on our brief stop here on the energy of happiness, the importance of what you think, how you think, and how you talk to yourself internally can't be overstated. I wish uh, that Megan were here so we could say, Megan, make sure we do an energy. Energy of Thoughts podcast, because that is a really good uh, th uh, thing for us to cover. But the thoughts are, they're deep. I mean, you know, you have them. They are your mental processes. They occur in your mind and they have significant impact on our energy and on our emotions. Because as Joseph McClendon III teaches us, as we think, so we feel, as we feel, so we do, and as we do, so we have. But where does that begin? It begins in the thinking processes. And so when we upgrade our thinking processes, we're able to upgrade our emotional responses, which uh, uh, helps us to then upgrade our, our what we get out of life, what gets reciprocated back to us. Now, you might be hearing that little easy poem and thinking, yeah, but you talked about the second E is emotions, right? So yes, of course, you make decisions from your emotional place. And that's a that's something that is deeply involved. But your thoughts influence your emotions so much. And the kicker is the thoughts is the place that you have way more control over. Your emotions are a navigation system that are given to you in your physical body that are, are there for a multitude of reasons. Yeah, they're right? a response mechanism. Right. To, to warn you of things, to uh, make Make you fall in love, to be committed to your family, right? Emotions are a helpful tool for us in a physical sense, and we experience them as spiritual beings and as humans. But that's a lot more of waves we have to ride. The thoughts we have can get, we can condition a lot more easy, easily, and we have a lot more control over. And that's why it's number one here that we're talking about. Because if we can get a wrangle on those thoughts, we help influence those emotions quite a bit. And when we do that, then we take the action that's going to 
ultimately result in what we have, which then reinforces the thoughts. And then we feel happy. And that's what we're talking about here today is how to feel happy. And that's why our thoughts are so important. The waves are going to come in life regardless. Imagine that being strategic and critical with your thinking is like building yourself a boat in the ocean. Now, somebody who does not build themselves a boat has to ride every storm swimming inside the water. Now, that's going to be a lot rougher of an experience than someone who learns to ride the waves on top. I know that might seem like a little far-fetched, but this is one of those things that when you understand that creating structured thinking that can come alongside your emotions and support you in a positive manner can then lead to your actions supporting you for the outcomes that you desire in your life. Now, let's talk about that final E here in the T the T-E-E. This is the energy. Now, our energy refers to that vitality, that that it's almost this oozing, the electricity that comes off of you. In fact, uh, our podcast uh, director here, Christian, said, I can feel the energy coming off of you guys. Yes, you can. And that's because we get really intentional with the energy piece because it turns out that once your thoughts and your emotions are in line, energy becomes something that you can influence and you can influence it for your benefit. Like you, you can't think of any, like think of the most happy person, you know, think of every happy person, you know, are they low energy? No, they're not. These two concepts are really correlated. And so when we spill this TEE, right, when we talk about our thoughts, our emotions and our energy, these are three levels where our happiness is at play a lot. And that's what we want to focus on. Right. Our thinking is going to influence how we how we think about happiness and and how we define it. Right. Have you even thought about is it fulfillment? Is it contentment? Is it joy? What is that expression for you? And then how you feel about it is going to pull you in the direction of how of the actions that you take. And then you're going to get that energy, right? It's going to feel, it's going to fuel you because you're pulled with emotions towards the actions that then result in the things that make you, make you happy, even though it started up with those thoughts and those emotions, and then you get the energy from it. So these three areas are areas where we're going to see happiness really grow and explode and spark. And what are the areas that are affected when we're low energy, when we're high energy, aka low happiness, high happiness, it's going to be all these different areas, our physical health, our relationships, relationships with others and with ourselves, with our pets, with our kids, with our colleagues and our vendors, right? There's so many relationships that we have to manage in this day and age with our time management, with our stress management. All these different areas are places where our happiness and our energy are really impacting our outcomes in our everyday life. Well, you notice this. I think many of us have the tendency to wake up inside our outcomes and kind of wonder like, how did I get here? You look around and you're like, what are, how did I get to this point, right? Maybe you're dissatisfied with the results that you have, or something came that that you thought was going to be bigger than it was, or maybe something came unexpected and it was amazing out of nowhere. And you're looking around and you're saying, how did I get here? Right. Hopefully you've had both experiences, right? Like, whoa, whoa. I'm so blessed. And also, whoa, whoa, what just happened? Right. Like, cause that, cause yes, you're a human. So please continue. But right to have both is just one of those experiences and and absolutely well and being able to find yourself happy inside either one of those Mm -hmm. is where I think that the juice and the challenge comes through but being able to support ourselves energetically in those moments where we've got to kind of shake ourselves and say you know we look around and we take stock and we say how did we get here when we look back oftentimes we tend to say well you know I got to this place I got fired from my job right I get fired from my job well I look back and I say well you know I was late and they did write me up and I had this issue and then there was this other thing. And so you're looking back at the accountability and you see all of these actions in the way. Now let's take this to another level and maybe think about when we are doing this post-mortem, if you will, on where we are, can we look back and say, not what actions did I take to get here, but maybe what thoughts preceded those actions and how could I adjust that thinking in order to create more happiness, not only in the outcome, but in the process along the way? A pragmatic dissection of your past actions can help you figure out how to be happier in the future. And and that assessing where you've been and what you've done so far can help you do that. Be a realist. Don't be pessimistic about what you've done and get out your boxing gloves and beat yourself up. And don't put on your white gloves and treat yourself like an oogie boogie. There's places (laughs) where you've messed up. Fuck up, kid. But be a realist, right? Take, Take the buck where you need to take it. Take ownership. Sometimes circumstances influence things out of your control. 
sometimes you messed up and you take you take ownership of that and from each one of those you learn and you move on you be a realist about where you've been this can help you cultivate more energy towards the confidence it takes to have the action and the courage to move forward in the direction of what it is that you want to do because likely what it is that you want to do is outside of the realm of what you've already done otherwise you're just comfortably plogging along doing what you've done but if you're trying to achieve something physically business-wise spiritually in a relationship then you're 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 doing something outside of your comfort zone which means you've got to find that energy to do it and so doing these kinds of things can help you practice the ways that you channel energy for that you know shy you just said a critical word there and here in the last couple minutes of our second segment i want to bring forward this idea of if maybe you're like I'm not very happy and I want to get better at being happy. Or maybe you're like, I'm moderately happy, but I want to be very happy. I want to be in that one third of people. Now you can practice being happy without needing events to come to you in order to make you happy. And you can practice being happy simply by smiling. I honestly think Shyla, that being in the service industry since we were children, literally children and having to do this at all times (laughs) contributes to our happiness because honestly, we have like server smiles on now just 100% of the time, but it turns out that smiles release endorphins in your brain. So if you want to feel better, if you want to feel better instantly right now, just point your chin up at a 45 degree angle and put a smile on your face and it will release endorphins inside your brain. And so practice being happy by using practical tools in order to trigger happy hormones in your neurobrain. Neurobrain? In, in your neuro brain? In your, <laughs> well, in your brain, in the neuro space of your head. <laughs> yeah. The neuro pathways of your brain bringing that forward. Hey, the hidden headline here for those of you who work in the hospitality industry, you are getting neuro encoded every day for happiness by being trained to smile. So take that benefit to the bank because it really does pay off. And that's the secret of neuro encoding. So in our first segment, we shared physically move your body. I guess this is another way we're saying physically activate, right? Doing those physical motions is a great way to trigger your body, to think the thoughts to and feel the emotions that will get you to do more of the actions it takes to get the results that you want. And in the final segment, we'll give even more tips for how to cultivate this happiness energy in your life. Stay tuned. One of our proudest business accomplishments is what we've been able to do with Squeeze In Franchising. The Squeeze In is a breakfast lunch restaurant featuring the best omelets on the planet, and it's been around for almost 50 years, and now you can have a squeeze in in your community. We've seen how this business transformed our families, and now we are so excited to offer this to families around the country to see how this little restaurant might change their family and their community. If you're wondering how to set up your adult children for legacy and success through a small business, then the squeeze in is an option we urge you to consider. Come find out more about squeeze in franchising at squeezein.com. You're enjoying this episode on Angel Phoenix Productions Podcast Network. To explore a complete lineup of quality programs and media production services, head on over to angelphoenix.com or like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Angel Phoenix Productions. The energy of happiness here on this episode is so fun, I think, to talk about because it's something we all seek and it's we all want, even though sometimes we get a little like, no, I want more than that. And you know, and we were, we're, we're really not talking about joy, contentment, fulfillment. We're all looking for happiness at, at one level, right? We have the slogans like choose happy and live happy and be happy. I want all those things too. Live, laugh, love. Oh, wait, that's not happy. <laughs> I bet that makes a lot of people happy, though, yeah. is to live, to laugh and to love. And if you're looking for more happiness in your life, we talked about physically activating. There's a few other ways that you can activate as well. One of them is to really activate on the energy of gratitude. And we've talked about it here before, but the power of gratitude helps you anchor into past moments of happiness, conjure them up and bring the feeling of endorphins and happiness into your body. What does this do? Your body doesn't know the difference between a memory and an actual experience, which means it's going, I feel 
feel happy right now in the moment. And it encodes to do that more often. Those neural pathways are firing. The myelin sheath is, is wrapping around it and it's making a stronger connection for those pathways to fire in the future. That's the neuro brain science <laughs> that was coming out to you when we talk about practicing gratitude. It's anchoring to those past happy moments that allows you to expand it, this capacity for happiness in your right now present moment. Now you said that magical word practice. Practicing gratitude is utilizing your past experience to practice happiness. So use this tool in order to bring happy into your present moment. Now the other strategy, and this is a this is one I think that it gets talked about a lot. It's kind of difficult to understand, but this is the practice of mindfulness. This is about cultivating positive energy through being mindful of your thinking. Many people find mindfulness deepened through practices like meditation. But recently, Shyla and I were actually kind of laughing that I think we gain a lot of mindfulness from being downright determined to stay optimistic in the darkest of circumstances. Now, Shyla and I don't face the darkest of circumstances, but you know, we're in the ring, man. We take a lot of punches and we have gotten really good at taking punches and turning back around with a smile on our faces. And so I think that over time, this has allowed us to create mindfulness when the emotions come up, when the difficult uh, uh, time arises, that you're able to be more of an observer of your thoughts than a participant of the wave of emotions, right? You're the boat on top of the water. You're not the person drowning in the waves. Right. And hopefully you're even being able to navigate the currents a little bit. Now, the way that we're able to be at most present through some of the tougher squeezes of life is through the next step, which is to practice the positive self-talk. And I want to talk about this from a from an angle of negative self-talk for a moment, because that's probably the level of self-talk you're more comfortable with. If you are more comfortable with saying to yourself what a loser you are, how how much you failed at things that remember you want to be a realist, not a pessimist when it comes to dissecting your own previous experiences. So be real with yourself, but don't be so critical on yourself. So I want to challenge that if you are more comfortable saying those negative things to yourself, that you might want to unpack that a little bit, our friend, because it does not cultivate happy, positive energy in your life. What does cultivate happy, positive energy is being able to learn from your past, Yes, be real with yourself, yes and tell yourself and recognize all of the amazing things that you've done, all the opportunities in front of you, all the resources available to you, all the people rooting for you, and all of the ways that you could get this right if you would just practice a little bit more positive self-talk. All right. So if you've been with us, you will know what we're about to do, but you're going to do it with us anyway. Put your hand in the air, turn it to the back of the room. Bend it at the elbow and pat yourself on the back because even a physical expression of positive self-talk can be a positive way of creating more of those happiness chemicals and bringing you happiness in your life. The next thing we're going to talk about, it, it's going to be super fast, but physical activity, get your body moving. We talked about it at the beginning, but just want to bring it forward one more time because physical activity can be one of the things that stokes us out of a negative spiral. You can use physical activity as a pattern an interrupt to give yourself just enough time to maybe pivot into a different type of energy. But this next tip that I love is be intentional about what you intake, not just talking about food consumption, but what kind of media are you consuming? What kind of people are you allowing into your life? Being mindful about your intake can greatly influence your levels of happiness because when you're not intentional, you intake maybe some things that aren't contributing to ultimately your highest good. Now, I want to tell a little bit of a story about how we got to combine kind of these two things that Kate just presented here. And you may have noticed Notice. Actually, you probably can't notice, but we are wearing matching shirts today. <laughs> they are the new shirts that we got from beautiful Florida. We got to go to San Destin in Destin, Florida and uh, speak at a conference there at the Triple S annual conference. It was such a fun time and we got to craft a day there. We spoke early in the morning. We were due at the evening event, but on the in-between, we had this day. And so we intentionally looked at it and we and we we got to do something that was really fun. It was physical. It was riding bicycles. And let us tell you, this was such a 
fun experience that made us feel so yes happy and had so much fun. We were being physically active. We were seeing the sights of the community. We were getting to experience something new and novel and and fun and getting to engage in something that was really happy overall. And so being intentional about how we crafted the day, getting to ride the bicycles and do something physical was something that we would encourage you to do when you get to go out and do something. What's something you could add that would allow you to create some happiness right inside of what you're already doing? All right, guys, you heard Shai just say a golden tip because this doesn't take a whole lot of effort. What are you already doing right now? Right now that if you were to make a tiny shift in what you're doing, it would make it better. Let's talk about this. Maybe you're listening to this podcast in your car. And if you are, yay, thanks for giving us your drive time. That's so nice of you. We uh, hope that you subscribe. Okay, get out there and subscribe. Anyways, if you're in your car right now, look around you. Is there an old can in your car? Is your dashboard dusty? Have you been neglecting that car wash? Is there something that you could do? Is there an action that you could take? Is there physical activity you could put in into motion that would improve either the state of things around you or the state within you quickly and easily right now that might contribute to your happiness. That might be something as simple as taking the can out of the cup holder of the car. I may have a can in the cup holder of my car that I'm thinking about right now that I need to take out. But I tell you what, when I do that, it's going to give me those happy brain chemicals. It's going to give me a tiny little endorphin rush. And that contributes. Every little drop counts toward your ultimate fulfillment. Right? Root for you and have the internal voice root for you. That's what we were talking about with the negative self-talk. If you're more comfortable being not nice to yourself, quit that. Be rooting for you. And when you grab the can out of the car, say, good job, shy. Good job, person. Right? Like, allow yourself to say the two-word phrase inside of your brain because it literally fires those neural pathways that help you feel happier. And we know that's what it's all about. In fact, negative self-talk is one of those signs that you are limiting happiness in your own life. So is burnout at work. So is is having out of control stress. And so if you're feeling those signs, then you might want to start practicing some of that mindfulness, some of anchoring to past happiness, some some of that gratitude, some of this physical activation, maybe some positive mental self-talk, a lot of ways that you can create and cultivate more capacity to flow the energy of happiness in your life. Now, social isolation is another thing that can appear when somebody is feeling low on their own happiness levels and want to just take the last bit here to talk about the power of a community on your levels of happiness. Now, it is directly shown and demonstrated through long-term studies of people like in their 80s that community and powerful relationships significantly contribute to people's rates of life satisfaction over time. And so, first off, thank you so much for being a part of the Infinite Energy community. We're so happy to have you be a part of this and what we are building here. Now, there are all kinds of communities that we would also encourage you to be a part of. Maybe you're already blessed with a family, or maybe you need to look around the people at you and say, is this the community that I want and that is ultimately serving my highest good? A sense of belonging is one of the best things you can do to help you feel happy and to build a support network around you so that when you don't feel happy, there are those to remind you of all the things that can help you feel a little bit better and flow that energy into your life. So we hope that you've enjoyed this episode on the energy of happiness. It comes at you with so much love as always from your sisters, Kay and Shai. This podcast was a production of Angel Phoenix Productions. Explore more episodes of this show or other great shows on the Angel Phoenix Podcast Network by visiting angelphoenix.com. The views expressed in this show do not necessarily represent those of Angel Phoenix Productions or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners.